The ultrasound guided superficial cervical plexus block is an easy and useful block for various surgical settings. Common indications include operations on the anterolateral neck, such as carotid anarthrectomy, thyroid and parathyroid surgery, but it's also useful as a bilateral block in anterior cervical spine surgery. It's a vital component too of regional anesthesia for surgery on the shoulder and the clavicle, especially those involving the acromioclavicular joint, as there are perforating branches that innervate the bony structures under the skin. The cervical plexus spills out from under the lateral edge of sternocleidomastoid muscle, approximately halfway between the sternal notch and the mastoid process. The branches of the cervical plexus innervate the skin and the deeper tissues over the anterior neck, reaching up as high as the mandible and the ear, and down to cover the cape of the shoulder. The lower branches are also called the supraclavicular nerves, not to be confused with the supraclavicular brachial plexus. And as mentioned, these innervate not just the skin, but also the acromioclavicular joint, anterior clavicle, and the sternoclavicular joint. The cervical plexus can be blocked with a subcutaneous injection along the lateral edge of sternocleidomastoid muscle around its midpoint, but an ultrasound-guided technique is easy and far more accurate. To perform an ultrasound-guided superficial cervical plexus block, place a linear ultrasound probe in a transverse orientation over the lateral edge of the sternocleidomastoid muscle at the halfway mark between mastoid process and clavicle. The muscle and its tapering lateral edge is the key landmark to identify. There is a fascial space underneath the edge of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which contains small structures that if you scan up and down the neck, will be seen to spread out laterally from under the muscle into the subcutaneous tissues. 10 milliliters of local anesthetic injected into this fascial space will block the superficial cervical plexus and produce sensory loss over the anterior neck, cape of shoulder, but also it will cause numbness of the jaw and ear, which is worth mentioning to the patient. Now, as previously mentioned, the lower supraclavicular branches of the cervical plexus are important targets to provide more complete analgesia of the bony clavicle and its joints, as well as the posterior shoulder region. And these nerves can be blocked separately from the main cervical plexus as part of a superficial infiltration after completing an in-plane lateral to medial superior trunk or interscalene block. This will spare sensory loss of the jaw and ear. Withdraw the needle into the layer above the superficial and deep cervical fascia after performing the brachial plexus blocks and inject 5 to 10 mils of local anesthetic here over the middle scalene muscle. The supraclavicular nerves are often visible with careful scanning before or after injection. You can also trace them starting from the cervical plexus to more clearly identify them. If in doubt, then just inject in the subcutaneous layer above the superficial cervical fascia that is, at a shallower rather than deeper level. A 25-gauge hypodermic needle can be used, or in this case, a 22-gauge block needle which you've used for the previous brachial plexus block injection. Once local anesthetic has been infiltrated, the nerves often become more obvious to the eye, 